2007, the city school in Sheffield hit rock bottom. It was failed by Ofsted, and at its lowest point, attendance was under 86%. Think about some of the equipment and some of the problems that you're going to encounter. In just two years, the school is out of special measures and has made dramatic improvements in attendance, which has shot up to almost 92%. The school continues its fight to improve this figure. It uses a whole range of different strategies, which makes it a model of good practice for other struggling schools in how to get the students through the gates. When the school was in special measures, attendance was indeed a problem. And when I arrived here, I decided that it needed to be one of our key priorities in terms of moving the school forward. And so that's when we introduced the whole school approach, made sure that everybody was focused on attendance and the importance of getting every student into school. I think it's really important, if attendance is going to be a whole school priority, which it clearly had to be, you need to divert resources towards it. So what we did, we put a behaviour and attendance team in place. OK, we're obviously meeting to um, establish uh, the action plan for this half term. Mm -hmm. Um, Their remit was to monitor attendance very closely and make the necessary interventions with students. Um, if I start with progress managers actually come to you to report lateness in assemblies, yeah. using the text service yeah. to make sure parents are aware. Mm. What's your name, please? Sam. Yeah. Where are you later? Straight to assembly, please. To me, uh, there's two homeschool liaison mentors um, and there are three attendance clerks and we do it on a rota basis. So there's usually one mentor and one clerk on the gate every morning. Are you late? Waiting for a jacket to dry. Right, you need to go to assembly, quickly. Are you late? I think it's your uh, assembly this morning. Straight down to assembly. The lates have gone down since we started doing it. We've been doing it about 18 months now. And, you know, but we do have the regular kids that are late. And, and obviously, we monitor that. We put them all onto a database. And then at the end of every half term, let us go out to parents to say how late they've been. Or we might ring home and just find out if there's a particular issue. So there's a lot of things that do get uncovered. One thing that we, we found out that were parents were not aware that their children were being late. So if they're setting off for school early enough in the parents' eyes, but then they're actually going to the shop or they're calling for friends, and then they're late when they get to school. So uh, the majority of the students, we have been able to inform parents that their children are being late for school and they weren't even aware of it. We have a very good data information system within school um, that gives us the relevant information on attendance this term we've also launched um, electronic database to, to parents so that they can log on and actually find out whether their child is in school or not. Now that is very powerful because straight away they can see from a place of work or home whether their child has actually entered school on time or indeed not turned up at all and, and immediately that can lead to a contact to school if school hasn't already contacted. Underlining the link between consistently being in class and achieving well at school has been essential to the success in raising attendance. I always argue that if a child's not here, they're putting themselves at a disadvantage to other students. And with parents, I always think that's a very important selling point because parents, when you market attendance and the importance of it like in that way to parents, they don't like the thought of their son or daughter being disadvantaged as against other children. And that's quite a powerful mechanism by which we improve attendance. The school has been particularly successful in bringing down the number of persistent absentees through building close links with parents. Come in, sit down. Oh, thanks for having me. No Anna. problem, not a problem. Linda Bates is one of the school's two homeschool liaison mentors. Good. She's, uh, she's doing OK, a lot better than we have been. Well, we're, we're really pleased at school mm -hmm. at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, you know, she's into more classes. Yeah. Um, it's just feeling part of school life and feeling so. normal. I think she felt very isolated. Yeah. Yeah. She's also mixing more with friends. Yeah. What we're after here is breaking down barriers um, between the school and the home. Um, students often feel more comfortable um, in their own surroundings to talk about any problems that may be preventing them from attending school. And once we're aware of those issues, it's then the homeschool liaison mentor's uh, role to actually work with parents and work with students to try and to find possible solutions so that the students 
can attend school on a more regular basis. Some families are, are very easy to work with, but obviously some families, they don't want the problem solving. They may really be quite happy with their life, thank you very much, and education's not a um, high priority for them. And that's what this job's about, changing perceptions. We might be looking at third generation unemployed um, in the family, um, they don't have school high on their agenda. But uh, we have to never stop trying to get these students in to have a good education. For a student who is a persistent absentee, it is really about having a phased, sensitive approach to reintegration and finding out what we can do on a very personal level for that student to get them back across the threshold. It might be something as, um, to begin with, as gentle as having the students into school when no other students are here. And that's very much around familiarity with setting and about having the students walking the school, going into classrooms, um, becoming familiar with the geography. I think that's particularly important for students who have difficulties when they first come to us from perhaps quite small primary schools into a very large setting and students can feel emotionally quite insecure about that. My daughter has had um, issues with um, attendance at school. She's had uh, problems um, and basically transition was going to be a problem for her and much as though her, her primary school were aware of it, um, I wasn't sure how the secondary was going to cope with it, if indeed they'd got enough things in place to deal with it. They've dealt with it fantastically, actually. Um, I think it's the fact that they can get to the nitty-gritty of it and they can actually bring a child on without the child actually realising. And I want you to just decide what this represents. Sign. Could be an equal sign. The school's leadership's well aware that the question of students' motivation is fundamental to improvements in attendance. Attendance can't be seen um, in isolation. It's all very well getting the kids into school, but it's what they do when they're actually there. They won't attend as well if they don't enjoy what's going on. They won't just attend as well if they don't see it as being relevant. These things here, which are what, Will? Twin towers. The Twin Towers. And this man here, Philippe Petit, started to dream, and he started to dream about something that he was really good at, which is to stand on one of these things, it's suspended between two buildings, and he walked across it with nothing to help him at all. We've had a lot of staff training on active learning techniques. What we've done is we've rewritten lessons, we've really spoken to teachers about making lessons more engaging by including the students. Inside, then, you've got a list of instructions, and this is where you're going to start working together and talking to each other. It is not enough for somebody to get it all out and go, I'll do it. We've got 10 minutes and it's going to start now. I want to hear some noise now. Off you go. No, to put on the end of the room. Yeah, to fire it across and then you put the steel cable along the fishing line. When we design lessons now, we really think about putting the students at the heart of the lesson. But then again, you won't be able to sneak past. You could get a job. Okay. We look at them discovering things for themselves, working collaboratively, using their imagination, trying to give open-ended tasks so that they can respond in lots of different ways. How are you going to hide the crossbow? Uh, put it in the box. Yeah, yeah, because... The students are actually very canny themselves about, of course, what makes a good lesson. Well, because you need two people going at one building and two people going at the other building. The teachers will ask the students how they feel about the lessons and what students think the, the teachers ought to do to improve it. From there to there and see if you can balance all the way. If we had a drum roll, we'd give them a drum roll, but look at that. If teachers make lessons more interesting and more fun, then more kids will come to school instead of truanting. Give them a clap, please. Thank you. You need to be interested in the subject and like the teachers can certainly help like build the interest in the students like with the way the lessons are planned. Thank you. Right. Thank you very much. Okay, you've got another tool in the school's battle to improve attendance is the truancy sweep. 
When we involve the neighbourhood police, that's because we're dealing with the hard edge of school truancy, and that might involve things like truancy sweeps, where you have a member of the police involved for obvious reasons. Um, but that's been successful in terms of touring the local neighbourhood and making sure that it's high profile and students are always approached if they're of school age. Just need a quick word. Can you take your words down for me a minute? Watch. I think it adds uh, a little more depth to it in terms of authority, uh, so they realise that the police are involved in wanting young people in schools to be safe and secure more than anything and to reduce that vulnerability uh, that they put themselves in. When they're out on the streets, the parents don't know where they are uh, and school staff aren't aware of where they are. OK, then, lads, we need to go back into school now. That we're doing the Trinity Streets far more frequently now. We used to do them in the town centre and perhaps around Christmas time or specific times where we thought students might be at truanting. But now, as a strategy, we do them at least once a half term within the city school area. Uh, we're just talking to young people that we would normally expect to be in school and, and aren't in school. What we quite often uh, do is look at getting students together and we talk to them about the reasons why they've been out of school. At the end of these sessions, several of them have said that they've realised the fact that they do make themselves really vulnerable. So for some of those students, yes, I think there is a change uh, and we are seeing them more often in school. So you all know where your pulse is. Don't you? The school's health improvement programme links in with its drive to cut down on absence on medical grounds. Stand up. Are you ready? Have you got some space? Go. To promote good health and well-being, it's paramount having a good school attendance record. Um, ill health is a, a well-researched barrier to attainment. And stop and find your pulse. I'm involved in our personal social health education curriculum by promoting general good health through lessons. They are developing skills that will carry them all through their school life to maintain their attendance and improve their attainment. Okay. So sit yourselves down and relax. We set ourselves a very clear target to reach the national attendance rate of 92.4%. And I have to say that we're about there in Key Stage 3. We're very, very close to that. We still need, we still have a little way to go in Key Stage 4, but again, we're working on putting an appropriate curriculum in place. I think more people are coming to school lately because it's improved. Everyone definitely feels that they've come to school, and with the new interest in lessons, that they, they certainly are. The amount of lateness has certainly gone down in my class. If they like what they've been taught, then they'll like then they'll come to school more, because then they know it's not really boring. I really believe that if you make students welcome, if the curriculum they're offered is engaging and relevant, they will want to come through the doors every day, and I really believe that. And that's the mission that I've started, and that's the mission that we've been successful on so far.